we want to determine each limit if it exists. These three limits are often called special limits. We will determine these limits using Desmos.com and analyze a table of values as well as a graph. First, we have the limit of the quantity one minus cosine x divided by x as x approaches zero. Let's go to Desmos.com, click graphing calculator. I'm gonna go ahead and change the background to black. To do this, click the wrench, click reverse contrast. And now let's click on the plus in the upper left hand corner and click table. By default, x1 is in column one, y1 is in column two. I'm gonna go ahead and just change x1 to x. In the second column, I will clear the y1 and enter the quantity one minus cosine x divided by x. Now going back to column one, let's first approach at zero from values less than zero. For example, negative 0.1, enter. Let's get closer, negative 0.01. Let's get even closer, negative 0.001, enter. Notice as we approach x equals zero from the left, or from values less than zero, we can see the function value is approaching zero. Notice when x is equal to zero, the function is undefined. And now let's approach x equals zero from values greater than zero. So let's go down one, two, three cells. Let's start with positive 0.1. Let's go back up and enter 0 0.01. Let's go up again and enter 0.001. Notice as we go up the table, we're approaching zero from values greater than zero. And again, we are approaching the function value of zero, the limit of the quantity one minus cosine x divided by x as x approaches zero is equal to zero. But let's also look at the graph. So I'm gonna go to cell two, enter y equals the quantity one minus cosine x divided by x. Let's adjust the window. Let's click on the wrench. Let's go down to the x-axis. Let's change the x-min to negative seven, tab, x-max to seven. Let's change the step to pi over two. And let's change the y-minimum to negative 1.5, y-max to 1.5, steps by one. We can go ahead and close this menu by clicking outside the menu. Notice right now we have these pink points on the graph, and that's because if we go back up to the table, the points from the table are being plotted in pink. We can go ahead and turn this off by clicking on the pink circle. And we can see if from the graph as we approach x equals zero from the left and the right, we are approaching the function value here of zero. We can actually click and hold on the graph and then move the point closer and closer to x equals zero from the left. and as well from the right. This graph is not completely accurate because if we move to the origin, notice how it will tell us that when x is zero, the function is undefined, so the graph does need to have an open point at the origin to be an accurate graph. Either way, we can tell from the table or the graph, the limit is equal to zero. So going back to our work, we now know this first limit is equal to zero. I've already set up the work to determine the next two limits. Let's now consider the limit of sine x divided by x as x approaches zero. So again, I've already set up the table here. As we approach x equals zero from the left, our values less than zero, we can see the function values are approaching positive one. And the same is true as we approach x equals zero from the right, our values greater than zero, we are approaching the function value of one. So the limit is equal to one, and if we go over to the graph, which again I created by entering the function, we can see as we approach x equals zero from the left and the right, we are approaching a function value of one. Again, we can click and hold on the graph and drag a point closer and closer to x equals zero from the left, as well as from the right. And again, when x equals zero, the function is undefined, so an accurate graph should have an open point at the point zero comma one. The limit of sine x divided by x as x approaches zero equals one. And for the last limit, we have the limit of the quantity one plus x raised to the power of one divided by x as x approaches zero. And again, I've already set this one up as well. This limit's going to be a little more difficult 
to determine the exact value we are approaching. Looking at the table, as we approach x equals zero from the left, it appears we are approaching a function value that's approximately 2.72. And as we approach x equals zero from the right, our value is greater than zero. Again, it does appear we are approaching a function value of approximately 2.72. But again, from the table, it is a little more difficult to determine the exact function value we are approaching. And the same is true from the graph. As we approach x equals zero from the left, again, we can see it looks like we are approaching approximately 2.72, and the same is true from the left. But we're actually approaching the number e. So if we go down to cell three and enter y equals e, remember e is an irrational constant similar to pi, but we can see here it's approximately 2.71828. And we can see that that is the value we are approaching as we approach x equals zero from the left and the right. So this last limit is equal to e. The limit of the quantity one plus x raised to the power of one divided by x as x approaches zero equals e. I hope you found this helpful.